Bulo Pambi Limni. See, I know you're probably not used to that name being called out like that on air. Very, 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 very awkward right now. Really? But yeah, it's cool. <laughs> but it's your government name. No, I know, but no one actually calls it out by its entirety. Mm. We just did. But it's I mean, fine. I have no choice. I have to. <laughs> I mean, it's you fine. are doing so phenomenal, my brother. But I'm glad that you're here today to speak about everything and to give us a side that we do not know about Pambili. Right. But before we go any further, we need to ask you the question. Mm -hmm. What has been on your mind? mind? I'll hit you with a uh, curveball. Oh. Uh, so I've been trying to go back to watching uh, stuff, basically. So I've been so busy that I've not actually been watching any content. Okay. Not just content, I mean like movies and TV shows. So I've been doing that a lot to get inspiration and, you know, try and figure out what I can do moving forward mm -hmm. in terms of my creativity. Yeah. So I've been watching this amazing show called The Bear. I don't yeah. know if you know of it. Not aware of it. Okay, so quickly, it's a show about uh, a restaurant mm -hmm. that wants to become like a three-star certified top-of-the-range yeah, sous chef mm, okay. or sous restaurants. Yeah. So it's just a show about how those people are transitioning from being like a mom and pop store mm -hmm. to like one of the best restaurants in Chicago. And I've been really, really loving the show because of how it's shot and how it's presented. And mm. I've been obsessing over that show for the past week, I think. So I've been really thinking about that show. So you've literally just plugged us Netflix or Showmax. Where can you get it? Ah, or Amazon? It's actually on. I think it's a, it's a Fox show. So it's probably on Hulu. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's it's ah. a it's a it's so a. <laughs> you pay for a Hulu subscription. I have my ways. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're going to let us know. You're going to let us know. <laughs> I was with Pambili TV, right in 88.2. Send through your questions on Twitter and on Facebook. Use the hashtag Saturdays Reloaded. No, oh, I will. No. <laughs> when it comes to what? When it comes to <laughs> cinematography. There we go. <laughs> 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 Which personality did you think I was no, going to talk about? Continue. I feel like you were. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Hang out with Pambili TV right in 88.2 and we are trying to decode who Pambili is per se. But I think before we more or less get straight into the depth of the conversation, let's talk about your creativity. Mm -hmm. Where do you say you draw most of your inspiration from? Uh, I would say I grew up, again, I, I don't know if you noticed by now, mm -hmm. but I really like, love film and TV. Yeah. So growing up, for the most part, I would even joke to my friends that uh, I was babysit by DSTV. Mm -hmm. So my parents would always give me money and say, go to town and hang out with friends. But I either watch soccer or watch movies the whole time. Mm. So I think from a young age, me sitting in and just watching TV, I think I got inspired by trying to figure out how do they do it. What? Like, I can name movies at the top of my head. So yeah. I think that's why I got inspired for the most part. But then when you speak about watching movies and wanting to know how it's done behind the scenes, mm -hmm. one would probably say you wanted to pursue a career in producing or more or less, you know, just being a cameraman for a, a staged production. Like yes. Let's say right now this is a staged production. Yes. But one wouldn't think that you'd want to go into the lines of, you know, event videography or just, you know, editing for corporate events something along those lines so how did that come about okay so that is simple that is still in line with what i said mm -hmm. so you can't just yeah, grow and be just, a big deal yeah, yeah you see so you have to start somewhere mm -hmm. so for the most part i started out on youtube but i saw that my youtube was slowing me down because i was not getting the reach and engagement that i not that i not that i wanted we felt so, you deserve. Not even deserve. So how I broke it down was this. Mm -hmm. On YouTube, if I want to check out a video that's 10 minutes, yeah. it takes me a long time, like a week, to actually make that, that video. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to like social media, what, 30 seconds, 15 seconds, I can actually do a lot of videos like that and grow quicker mm -hmm. than trying to focus on one YouTube video. So I was like, you know, let me try out the social media thing. And that's why I didn't have a social media presence before Pumpy TV. And then mm -hmm. I just started posting on social media. So it's a strategic way of me trying to accelerate my growth and also accelerate my name and my branding <coughs> within that. So do you like to separate the two or do you constantly like to be addressed as Pambili? Like the, I, I heard when I was doing the <laughs> intro that you were not very much, you know, I don't want to say 
familiar with people calling you with your government name but would you say there is a distinction between the two and how do you separate the two okay funny enough i don't know if i have time for this backstory <laughs> <laughs> so growing up in high school i had another nickname i won't even tell you guys that why i won't <laughs> was it really that bad i don't like it okay it was given to me so but i was like ah. gelatin cause yeah, yeah after, after, after the fact uh-huh. So no one calls me by Njabulo. That's the first thing, besides mm-hmm. my parents. Yes. So Njabulo Mnesi is what people would normally call me. Mm-hmm. But Pambili was actually very funny in high school because everyone's like, what name is that? Mm. So I'd be made fun of all the time. Pambili, ah! But when I went to varsity and I went to South Africa, funny enough, people actually loved my name. So it was the first time I'm like, how, how are you guys always... Pambili, it's like it's, um, it's the most amazing name in the world. Mm. So when I actually went to South Africa, I started to like own the, the the name. So from there, I got confidence in using it. And then I was like, you know what? When I start back on my social media journey, yeah. Minutes past the hour, ten, watch on eighty-eight point two, your favorite Saturday show, or hanging out with Pambili TV. What songs are you listening to, Pambili? Yo, my playlist is 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 a mess. <laughs> it's all over the place. It's, it's no, it's it's. I wouldn't advise anyone to listen to my music. It's but, basically UK. Drill rap. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. It's very toxic. <laughs> I was about to say because the, the only, I think, top of my head, five songs that I've known are very aggressive. Yeah. Very rough. Very toxic. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. So is that the only genre that more or less floats your boat? Or are you someone who could say is very versatile when it comes to certain genres? So long as it's good music, you're there. Uh, so I've had to force myself to actually listen to a broader spectrum of music because I have to incorporate music into my editing. Yes. So I've been tapping into so many genres, uh, Deep House, mm-hmm. uh, South African, Gom to some extent, mm-hmm. Summer Piano, uh, Afro Pop. So I've been expanding K-pop even to some extent, mm. and I'm actually finding some songs that I really like. I'm literally I'm singing like for this year. That's some bangers. You'd be shocked <laughs> because I mean we've never actually seen like Pambili actually getting down, like, yeah. getting down. <laughs> like if you've seen Pambili on events, he's the most serious person yeah. ever. Because I'm working. <laughs> yeah, we're all working, but we try include fun somewhere in there. I mean, nah, nah, nah. I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hmm. Okay, let's travel back to the first memory you have of you seeing or rather using a camera. When does the feeling of I am liking this kick in? Hmm, oh, me liking. Uh, so I, uh, that's a tough one to say because prof- there's professional camera and then there's camera, which is like your phone. Mm-hmm. So again, I went to Varsity in Pretoria. Mm-hmm. So that's the first time I got like a proper, you know, smartphone that can take proper pictures. Mm-hmm. So I was really like astounded because I also studied construction. So it was architecture based stuff. Okay. So I w- was always curious about, not curious, I was always like shocked at how beautiful the architecture actually was. Mm. And I'd always take out my phone to like capture the surroundings of Pretoria. Mm. So I think that's where also like the actual doing something yeah. now with the camera started. Mm-hmm. And I'd go around with my friends doing like silly things and doing that mm. and then my first then I got another phone and I started doing YouTube but I was really good at editing but the video quality was not really great mm-hmm. and then funny enough my aunt who was in Taiwan actually sent me a camera because she was like Yatik Tsin, I can actually see that you are really good at this let me just give you my camera because I don't actually use it and then mm. she gave me the camera and then from there there was no looking back and then you spoke about you know you studying construction at UP. Let's talk no, about at TUT. Sorry. TUT. Sorry. Yes, All right. Yes. Let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. Why was that the first choice of study that you wanted, or was it something that you just did? No. What's so the story I, behind that. So I was very good with like maths mm, and physics. Okay. So naturally, you know, your parents would be like, "Hey, you need to focus on something that will make money and yeah. something that you're really good at." And I also think I've not. I never really wanted to do like a corporate type job, so I then chose to do civil engineering. So, yeah, I just ticked all the boxes. You could have been a doctor, though. Yay. Nah, I mean, nah, you, you nah, are literally giving nah. the right <laughs> combination. Nah. Before the musical break, I did pose a question asking, you know, what is the fascination behind, you know, putting two videos together and actually curating them in a form of making someone who wasn't there feel like they wanted to be a part of or want to be a part of that specific event or 
that specific project that you're working on okay so to me it's all about how does the person on the other side feel mm-hmm. so it's not just about cool transitions and yeah. sound effects and all those things mm-hmm. it's how does a person feel so for instance if i have a clip of a person reacting to the song and they are really like getting into it emotionally and they are crying or they are screaming at the top of their lungs mm-hmm. that to me is a prime clip i have to incorporate that into the edits as much as i possibly can okay. because i'm trying to invoke feeling mm. where initially i was i was too technical i was trying to like you know edit to the beat and put this transition and do that but i was like no man I, someone must walk away feeling something mm. whether it's happiness sadness they must reflect on whatever i'm talking about in it it must just invoke something in them so that's my that's what i try to do by all means in all my videos sometimes i do succeed sometimes i don't mm-hmm. but that's what i try to do by all means so try to invoke feeling it's not necessarily about just the editing and then speaking of feelings there's a video that you posted and you were more or less highlighting the fact that the sole purpose or sole reason why you are someone who is not socially present is because it messes with the creative process and you feel like that's what a lot of creatives more or less get wrong they stay constantly on social media consuming certain energies that disturb their flow kindly elaborate on that let's talk about that for a minute okay ngala ko nceba yeah so man <laughs> before <laughs> before we started recording they were actually talking about twitter uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and someone was posing a question to someone this why are you always on twitter mm. it's such a toxic place why don't you leave mm-hmm. so that is also what i think about social media to some extent it's not necessarily good is it toxic or not it yeah. can be mm-hmm. but for me it's we end up comparing ourselves to other people yeah. so if i'm a videographer and i'm watching other videographers or other editors I'll mm-hmm. always be like oh this guy's using this transition this guy's using this or this guy's using a drone or this guy's using a, a lens or they they so and so and then I end up always being in my head of like I could do better or I could do this so I rather just stay away and just focus on myself and my creativity because I also have to be unique within that because mm-hmm. you can also try and copy people true that's a problem as well because you have to stand out so that's why I'm mostly off social media Hmm. One thing about Bambe ma camera ba tsanza timbo. That means in general speaker le sa pele umuntu asende sibe yimpo le nhlelo ka ka. And it's just a object konyalo. And I want to know what what inspires you to create more content mm-hmm. like song is cut nje. What inspires you? Uh again I will relate it back to the emotion. Mm-hmm. I always want I I care about how people feel to some extent. Yeah. So I always want to make people feel a certain way, but mostly happiness. Because mm. most people when they watch my content, they feel happy. They come up to me, "Oh, it's so nice to see you." But I feel like I I can see that they feel happy. Mm-hmm. So that's what inspires me for the most part. Just how just has to just have a positive impact on other people make them UNESCO FM. And the song was titled as Sign Motions featuring Chris Brown. Ah yeah yeah. <laughs> Love it for me Gasana. Way taking aye, a aye. break now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've taken over. <laughs> And <laughs> it's perfectly fine. Smash it with the top way. Kala next week. Apply CV thing. Okay, I want to know do you suffer from imposter syndrome? I've been asked that question before actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Funny enough, <laughs> yes and no. Say. Okay. Yes and no. So, no mm-hmm. in my surroundings because mm-hmm. I feel like uh in the kingdom of Eswatini and even in southern africa we are not we don't have access to the proper equipment or mm-hmm. the proper education to actually upskill ourselves with videography and editing yeah. so when it when i look around me i feel like that's hindering so many people so i don't feel like i'm an imposter there mm-hmm. so i don't feel like I'm, i i don't fit but when it comes to internationally <laughs> ay ay what those people are doing internationally is crazy mm-hmm. americans uh UK people uh Japanese people Koreans mm-hmm. their content is amazing so you can also do it mm. I'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to but I'm trying to put like a local spin to it I can't just emulate them yeah. I have to put me, who I am and where I come from mm-hmm. into it yeah and then you speaking of some of the content that you've created I mean you've done beautiful 
videos or content creation for people like Zinzi, Bianca, Mrs. M. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about, you know, that. What what would you say was your first ever project that you did for a big event or a, an influencer in the country? And how would you say the pressure was for you? Do you feel any pressure while doing it? Okay, this is all oh, you guys are hitting with serious questions. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> funny enough, uh the person who first reached out to me was Zinzi Twala. Mm-hmm. So I knew her from like high school. But she actually saw my content and she was the first person to be like, I want you to do this specific thing for me. Mm. And I was like, No, Zinzi, I'm still new. I'm I I'm still trying to learn. She was like, Hey, hey. Yeah, I, I want up. you. So, I'm born, <laughs> <Zinzi>. so <laughs> so that actually gave me like the confidence of like she backed me. Mm. So it wasn't a uh, a matter of me feeling pressured or anxious because yeah. I already knew her and I saw that she really trusted me and she mm. gave me so much time to actually perfect the edits. So I'm forever appreciative for that from since. Yeah. And then honestly, before we wrap up this conversation, real quick, because we have entered a space that, you know, we are still trying to get accustomed to, but mm-hmm. you seem to have some knowledge on it. So I'm going to put you on the spot for just a little bit. All right. Let us know what the future of content creation looks like in the new AI generation or world that we're currently, you know, currently being put in. Okay, this is a tricky question because most people are concerned about this. Mm-hmm. But I don't think we should be necessarily concerned because at the end of the day, we want to see the human elements to whatever is presented to us. Mm. So that's why even influencers will never go out of style because we want to see the person behind you. We want to see Zins, we want to see Bianca, we want to see whoever. Yeah. We want to have a human connection to other people. Mm. So no amount of AI can actually come in between that. Yeah. Okay. I want to get into so your top now. five now. Yes. <laughs> so you need to answer these questions as honestly and as quick as possible. As possible. Okay, hit me. <laughs> All right. First one, favorite gadget to use for work. Uh, my laptop. My laptop. Favorite meal to eat when sad. When sad. Yeah. Oh my days. Uh, uh, when sad. When sad. When sad. I don't think of food when I'm sad. Actually, that's shocking. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not even kidding you. When happy. Uh, probably donuts. Okay. Yeah. Favorite color. Blue. Hope you are not working. I am so obsessed with soccer, but Manchester United is just it's <laughs> not on my side recently. So I'm taking a chill there. But continue. Even just the class in every day. Now I'm saying, but that's disappointing. But continue. <laughs> Fondest memory of high school. Fondest memory of high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were very naughty kids, so that's all I'll say. But a lot of naughty stuff was happening. We'd like play jokes and practical jokes on each other. Hmm. So yeah, I don't know if I'm answering that. But a lot of shenanigans. Mm. I don't know if that's a big word, but that's ganga. As time we go to Sana Cool. Yeah, so good one. Yeah, that's about ganga, my catch it. Yeah. All right. No, thank you so much for hanging out with us, Pambili, and all the best for the future and, you know, with your work. Continue to keep us creatively wanting more. And continue applying pressure to certain people I won't mention, <laughs> but they know themselves. There's no, I'm not applying any pressure to anyone. Guys. <laughs> Just do better <laughs> than yourself yesterday. That's of all. Of course. Yeah. No, thank you so much for hanging out with my brother. All the best. I mean, but before you go, please do let us know where people can get a hold of your services if they want to book you for certain events or, you know, curation of content, influencers, or when they wants to do a podcast, let us know where you can get you. Okay, first of all, I'd like to say thank you guys for also extending, like, the invitation for me to come out here. It's mm-hmm. been a really cool experience. And if anyone's listening... <laughs> After six years, listen, I might just expose him <laughs> because every event he would duck and be like, Oh, Mandil, I know. And I'd be like, No problem. <laughs> anyway, yes. If you guys are interested in like coming here, these guys are very hospitable. You guys will have fun. Yes. So Thank come you. through and be a guest and have fun with the crew. Uh, you guys can catch me on Pumbly TV on all social media platforms. So it's just Pumbly TV, one word. And I've linked trees on my Instagram. So if you really want to like contact me, you can actually go to my link tree on my Instagram bio. Yeah. You're right, it in. Uh, it's a 100 million in my ah. <laughs> Wow. All right. Very expensive. Pumbi signing out. Go green. It's coming up at exactly 11 right here on 88.2.